everybody. Welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much for joining me for tea time once again. Today we have a little oolong with some black sage honey and a little bit of hibiscus. Really, really good stuff. So guys, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate all of you for coming. So today we're gonna be talking about Panasonic. Before I get into it, I wanna remind you, head over to my website, jchristina.com. Check all the products I've invented over the years. There's a lot of stuff there. Some of this stuff might work for your business or even if you're an amateur, some of those tools might work for you. And if there is something that you like, pick it up, throw it into your shopping cart and use Coupon code YT20. Once again, YT20 at checkout, and you'll get 20% off everything in that cart. So, the end of my shameless plug for my own stuff. <laughs> well, I guess it's better than someone else's stuff. So anyways, Panasonic. Now, I looked at this technology about three or four years ago, and uh, what it is is basically an organic sensor, and I'll get into it. I remember Fujifilm and Panasonic were like getting together, and they were developing this full-frame um, sensor that was organic, and we're like, what the heck is going on? What are they doing with this? Well, it's coming out. It will be here, and it will be in their massive 8K video monster that they're putting out for the 2020 Summer Olympics. So it's right around the corner. Very cool stuff. I listened to an interview about this and they were talking about it and what the benefits of this organic conductive film that's like over this CMOS sensor. Like what does it do? And it was really fascinating, really, really fascinating. I thought it was cool. Number one, it's supposed to extend the dynamic range. So a little bit wider dynamic range. So normally Panasonic's cameras are sitting at right around, let's say 14 stops. Um, they're looking on pushing it to 15 or 16 stops with this film, which is interesting. Also, they were speaking about a global shutter. Now, understanding how a global shutter works, I don't understand how this film over the sensor is going to allow them to capture full readouts of that sensor. I don't get it, but that's what he was saying, global shutter. All right, well, let's see how that works. Now, I don't think it has anything to do with this coating, so to speak, this organic coating, but you guys tell me, is I could be missing something. Also, what I found was interesting is it has this built-in dynamic, let's say, or ever variable, non-finite ND filter is, since this is a conductive organic surface or film over it, it makes sense, right? So you have a neutral density filter built onto your sensor almost, right? So that is really cool. So instead of using, for example, a ND filter and you only have certain steps of light, this is non-finite, ever variable, that you can just dial in the exact amount of light that you want to hit your sensor. Now, if you guys are out there doing a lot of extended work with uh, landscapes where you're pulling in, let's say, a ocean or um, let's say a river flowing or maybe a waterfall or something like that, you throw on an ND filter and now you can extend the time of exposure, right? So you can get that milky, nice, beautiful movement of water, right? It'd be impossible to shoot it without an ND filter, right? You need it. You absolutely need it. If you're not one of those guys, you don't understand how an ND filter works basically reduces the amount of light that hits the sensor. Now, conversely to, for example, changing the iris or your f-stop, which reduces the amount of light hitting the sensor, but also shrinking your iris, which will also adversely affect your depth of field, all right, will greaten your depth of field as you close that down. The problem with that is, is if you want to shoot, for example, f1.2 in sunlight and have that beautiful, beautiful shallow depth of field, well, you really can't do it unless you have an ND filter. Even if you crank your ISO all the way down to 100, let's say, there's still too much light hitting the sensor and that's what this will do. So this ever varying non-finite means of reducing light hitting your sensor, I think is really, really cool. I like it. I think it's a great idea. Now, 
Like I said, this is supposedly going to be out for the 2020 Olympics. It was designed for the 2020 Olympics, but I know when I was researching this years back, I believe Fujifilm was getting on board with this also. I think it's some type of collaboration between Fujifilm and Panasonic. And if that's the case, we might see Fuji with this also. Now they said from Panasonic that yes, this is going to be implemented in their 8K video beasts that will be at the Olympics, but it'll also trickle down that year so very shortly thereafter into their cinema line, as well as, get this, the Lumix line. So that's really big. So if you guys are Panasonic shooters out there, this is really, really big news for you guys because this could be amazing. If they really could put a global shutter in there and now trickle it down into a Lumix, they're basically one. I've told you guys this countless times before, once a global shutter is placed into a DSLR or into a mirrorless camera and it can shoot 20 to 24 megapixels, it's game over. DSLRs will be dead as we know it because now you do not need a shutter anymore, even for flash stuff. It just doesn't matter. Why is that? Because right now, mirrorless technology scans the sensor left, right, right, left or whatnot image by image by image, all right? So every time it takes a picture, it's scanning. It takes another picture, scanning. If you're doing video, it's the same thing. It's scan, 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 scan. That's why when you see, for example, a propeller of an airplane spinning with a mirrorless camera, what does it look like? It looks like a piece of taffy, right? <laughs> doing this stuff, right? It's bending. Why is it? Because the propeller is spinning so fast that it can't scan it frame by frame quick enough to capture image by image by image to freeze that action. Whereas if you have a global shutter, it works like a regular shutter and it captures full frame at a time. So if you have 24 million pixels, it captures 24 million pixels at a time, all at once. It doesn't scan across it all at once. So like I said, if they can pull this off and they are the first to be able to hit the consumer base with a global shutter, they won. That's my personal opinion, they won. So will we see it on Fuji's X line as well as their GFX um, line of cameras? 2020, it's possible, it's definitely possible because we know they had this collaboration going on or I believe they have. If you know something that I don't, please, in the comment area, Put all that knowledge, put all that information as you always do. Let's have that discussion. I absolutely love doing these videos. Why? Not because of the 10 minutes that I'm sitting here gabbing on, but the hundreds and hundreds of comments that you guys put in there, that community that we're building. So let's keep building that community going forward. And if you haven't went to the community that I started offsite of YouTube, please go check it out over at community jchristina.com. Once again, it's community.jchristina.com and it's a Discord server specifically for creatives. So you have a lot of these brilliant minds that we see down in the comment area, but over there also sharing daily, hourly, continuously live. And it's fully searchable and archived indefinitely. So it's very, very cool. So definitely check that out. Anyways, I wanna hear from you guys. I'm gonna wrap it real quick so we have a short one today. Let me know what you think about all this and in the comment area, put any questions that you might have for me. I'm gonna start doing like a Q&A type of thing, maybe on Fridays, whatever, fan mail Friday. I don't know, I'm gonna do something so that any questions that you have that I can maybe get a little deeper with, maybe on a Friday I will start doing that and maybe we'll do a live um, feed too once or twice a month. I'm trying to do a lot of different things here and I wanna hear your input, what you want to see. So guys, that's it, I'm out of here. As always, if you enjoy my content, throw me a big thumbs up, that would be awesome and smash that subscribe button so you can get all my content when it becomes available and click the bell icon around here somewhere. So when it is available, you will be notified of it. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. I would really appreciate it. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for the end of the vlog. We'll see you in the next one. Many blessings.